Hey, good evening, President Byrne. We are all here and ready to proceed whenever you are, sir. Okay. Yeah, you have to call the meeting to order. Okay, great. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Roll call. Trustee Marquardt. Here. Trustee Oppenheim. Here. Trustee Forster. Here. Trustee Cook. Here. President Byrne. Here. Trustees Schenk and Takaoka gave prior notice that they would not be in attendance. Okay. We have to appoint Tom President Wilcock, right? Where's the pledge? What was that? Yes. yes. Yeah, Correct. That. That's a motion for a temporary chair for this evening's meeting. I'd like to nominate Trustee Cook to be the chairman pro tem for the duration of the meeting. I'll second it. So there's a motion and a second. Roll call. President Byrne. Aye. Trustee Marquardt. Aye. Trustee Oppenheim? Aye. Trustee Forster? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Okay, so we're all set to go then. So uh, would everyone please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Okay, are there any citizens wishing to address the board on something other than what's on the agenda tonight? Okay, and hearing none, um, <coughs> under the village president's report, uh, the appointment of Thomas Lyons as finance director treasurer, effective January 18th, 2023. Uh, thank you, Trustee Cook. Um, as you all know, uh, last year the village made the decision to return the finance director village treasurer position to a full-time village employee from a contract position as it's been since 2018. In September of last year, the village began the recruitment process for this position with GovHR USA and a job advertisement and recruitment brochure were posted nationally across several dozen accounting and financial job boards. In total, 17 applications were received from across four different states and Canada. After a multi-round interview process, our interview team unanimous, unanimously recommended the selection of Tom Lyons as the village's next finance director and village treasurer. Tom has over 15 years of government, finance, and accounting experience, including work in both the public and private sector. Most recently, Tom served as the finance director and treasurer for the village of Wakanda here in Lake County. This recommendation to appoint Tom Lyons as the village's finance director and treasurer has been reviewed with President Byrne with his concurrence and is before the village board this evening for final consideration and approval. Okay, are there any comments or questions from the board? So we need a motion to? Yes, a motion to approve the appointment of Tom Lyons as the village finance director and treasurer. Is there a motion to that effect? So made. Second. Motion is second. A roll call, please. Trustee Forster. Aye. Trustee Oppenheim? Aye. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. President Byrne? Aye. Chairman Pro Tem Cook? Aye. Motion carries. All right. Okay. Tom, would you please join me up front? All right, this will make it official. Uh, could you please raise your right hand? Repeat after me. I, Thomas Lyons. Having been appointed to the position of finance director treasurer in the village of Vernon Hills, in the county of Lake, do solemnly swear and affirm that I'll support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and that I'll faithfully discharge the duties of the office of finance director treasurer. According to, the best of my ability. according to the best of my ability. Congratulations.
would you like to introduce your family and sure. and And if you could do it with one of the microphones or that sort of be, because we got the people on TV watching. Absolutely. This is my daughter, Abby. She's nine. This is my son, Eli. He's five and loves the police. <laughs> this is my wife, Amy. So Welcome, Amy. Congratulations. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Thank yep. you. Okay. And special thank you to, or special appreciation to Mayor Byrne for the appointment and the whole board. I appreciate it. I can't wait to get started. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Congratulations. Okay. Um, next, Assistant Village Manager, the 2023 Military Banner Program. Thank you. Good evening. Staff would like to take this opportunity uh, to invite eligible residents to participate in the 2023 Vernon Hills Honors Military Banner Program. For background, during May of 2022, as the Village Board was preparing to recognize Military Appreciation Month and those who served, trustees advised of programs in other communities that recognize the residents who previously served in the U.S. Armed Forces. During this discussion, Dr. Oppenheim shared information of Poughkeepsie, New York's Military Banner Program. Staff researched several programs and in partnership with the American Legion, Vernon Hills Post 1247, the village created the Vernon Hills Honors Military Banner Program. Our program is an opportunity for our veterans and our residents who may be currently serving on active duty to be recognized. As we kick off the new year, we want to remind the community this program is available to persons from Vernon Hills who have served in any branch of the U.S. Armed Forces or are currently serving. A policy has been created and is accessible on the village website, keyword military banners. The Vernon Hills Honors Program allows qualified persons to be honored by having a boulevard banner with their image and information about their service be placed on a municipal utility pole between the period of Memorial Day and Veterans Day of each calendar year. We are opening the up, up the application period for 2023. And to kick off 2023's program, we would like to share information on the first two applicants. First is Lisa Fishbach. Lisa is a Vernon Hills resident and recently retired after serving the village for over 20 years as a member of the Community Development Department. However, Lisa is being honored because of her distinguished career in the United States Air Force. Lisa enlisted and served from 1978 to 1999 in a variety of assignments and posts, including Guam, Masua, Japan, and Germany. Lisa achieved the rank of technical sergeant and retired after over 21 years of service. To Lisa, thank you for your military service. We look forward to seeing your banner fly in 2023. Next up, uh, many may recognize this young man as a former village board member. James Heyer served as trustee from 1983 to 1995. And as we know, the annual Veterans Fishing Derby has been named in honor of him and his wife, Helen. Jim is being honored because of his service in the United States Navy. Jim served in the Pacific during World War II on the USS Corregidor. Thank you to his daughter, Diana, who reached out to us all the way from Texas to share this image and information for the banner. Funding for this program allows 20 banners to be placed each year, so we are looking for 18 additional persons to honor this year. So if you are a Vernon Hills resident and have served or know of a Vernon Hills resident who served, please contact the Village Hall or American Legion Post 1247 to learn more about the Vernon Hills Honors Military Banner Program. Thank you. I had one question for you. The um, banners that we put up last year, um, are, are you going to put those out on 60 this year? So we, we have talked about that uh, with Dave and uh, ideal placement. So ideally, we wanted to place them along Lakeview going up uh, what we call our highest visibility area okay. by the parks. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, as we know in, in the last uh, board meeting, there's a presentation on a road redevelopment, and it's going to include a widening, which will take out the islands for approximately a period of 18 months. So we are looking for an, uh, a location. Route 60 has been one, along with uh, perhaps Lakeview going uh, to Fairway and maybe the Arbor Theater. Well, the only reason I was asking was because they weren't up as long, they, and they were only up down here at the at the golf course parking lot because we wanted to get the program started, but I was hoping to uh, 
you know, to get full recognition for that group if, if possible, so. If it's a village board's desire to have them placed now, we can do that. That was my understanding. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the, group, the group is going, the entire group from yeah. last year is going, that was a kickoff from last year? Yeah. Well, my understanding is that they would still be in this coming year yes. because, yeah, there was just a partial right. year. So there, so there aren't 18 additional spots. Eight, eight, 18 additional. Uh, we had funding last year. The new budget year will start May 1, and uh, the new banners will be paid out of that next budget year. So we'll have the previous banners, which have already been paid for, okay. along with an additional 20. Good. Okay. So, so you're Which talking about the funding as opposed to the number. It's not just 20 banners that we'll put up. We'll put up more if we have. Absolutely. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. I have a question. Um, have we reached out to any of the uh, uh, senior citizen homes to ask them to look through their roles to see? So I know when I've walked through, I've seen things at, on various doors when, when my mother-in-law yep, used to. Yep, absolutely. Have. So if you've been to uh, the, the park in Brookdale, they have an entire uh, section there where they honor their uh, right. current residents. So we do have a senior liaison program. And when I have been uh, visiting, I do make this program aware. I will, uh, after I give, uh, I guess, the Legion and our residents an opportunity, I will go back and I will say, I have uh, op opportunities available. I can start that as... It, as so we, may, we may need to reach out to some of their relatives to to get them involved because some of the seniors might not even be capable of of contacting you perhaps understand i will uh i'll Great. get on that thank you any other comments or questions about this um okay hmm. then uh, next item is the finance director of the finalized annual report and tiff reports uh yes uh what you have in front of you are hard copies of the fiscal year 2022 <clears throat> audited financial statements and the two TIF reports that were all presented at the December board meeting by the auditors. Um, if after any time you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to myself or, and or Kevin. And let me emphasize there were no changes from the time that they presented the financial statements. They were the final draft copy. Thank okay. you. Any comments or questions from the board? Okay, hearing none, moving on. Next item would be the, uh, nobody else on staff has any speaking parts, right? Okay, uh, omnibus vote agenda. Uh, is there a motion to approve items A through I? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Any comments, questions, concerns? Hearing none, roll call, please. President Byrne. Aye. Trustee Forster. Aye. Trustee Marquardt. Aye. Trustee Oppenheim. Aye. Chairman Pro Tem Cook. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, no unfinished additional business. Um, new business or communication, the uh, approval and passage of Ordinance 23010, an ordinance waiving the competitive bidding process and authorizing a two-year contract extension with Blue Stem Ecological Services to perform native stewardship services for the 2023 and 2024 seasons and for an expenditure not to exceed 120000 within the FY 2024 budget. Thank you very much. We wanted to highlight this and uh, make sure the board was aware so we, we have an open space management program. Blue Stem has been our contractor uh, working on that over the three-year contract. They've agreed to hold their pricing for the next two years. Uh, so based on their experience with the area, <coughs> their work is proven. Um, we're recommending that we extend their contract for two more years. Um, you may ask, what, why, what are they working on? So whether it's Hazel Time, our award-winning uh, open space there, whether it's Harvey Lake, um, areas at the VHAC, um, et cetera, et cetera, they manage those areas uh, for us. Before, we would uh, either have our whole public works department all go out to Harvey Lake, and we'd uh, hit it one year, but we really weren't doing a good job of managing it year after year, uh, just didn't have the capacity in house to do that. We decided to contract this out uh, three years ago. It's been very successful. Instead of having a contractor with 
one year at one location. It's a multi-year, multi-location um, contract. Therefore, they can manage the areas instead of just getting in there, denuding the area and restoring it. So it has saved us money over, over time and uh, our open spaces have never looked better. So just wanted to advise the board and we recommend ordinance 2023-010 uh, for approval. Comments or questions from the board? Is there a motion? This, this doesn't include Greg's Landing, does it? Uh, it does not include the roadways within Greg's Landing. It does include open space areas, uh, most notably the Hazel Time uh, area off of Butterfield Road and uh, west of Hazel Time. Okay. It also includes Harvey Lake, which, in, which is uh, adjacent to Greg's Landing South. But the, sort of the pond areas and the nature preserve areas? Uh, it does not include does not those include. areas, nor does it include any of the golf course areas. Okay. Any other questions or comments? If not, is there a motion to approve passage of ordinance 2023-010? So made. Second. We have a motion, a second. Uh, roll call, please. President Byrne. Aye. Trustee Oppenheim. Aye. Trustee Marquardt. Aye. Trustee Forster. Aye. Chairman Pro Tem Cook. Aye. Motion carries. Any other new business and communication? Yes, sir. I have uh, just one item to share. It's some, some good news, actually. Um, earlier today, the Lake Branch of the American Public Works Association uh, had their annual awards uh, event, and they honored our very own Dave Brown with the Samuel A. Greeley Award. Uh, this award recognizes dedicated and continued service to a local public agency. In order to be nominated for this award, uh, you must be, have been employed for 30 or more years by the local agency and must have been a member of the APWA for 15 or more years. So just wanted to say congratulations to Dave on, on your award. and. Uh, Sure, you'll have a few more to come probably in the next 30 days. So, <laughs> I think we can stand yeah. up and clap. And clap. Uh, any comments, sir? Yeah, I got one. Oh, go ahead, Raj. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I know we're. Dave is uh, obviously tenured his resignation and he's going to trip merrily along into uh, retirement. But the, uh, you know, he's done a superb job. He's done, uh, uh, you know, been involved in 30 years of projects in town. And, uh, Dave is uh, obviously a key, key employee to this village, and uh, I wish he'd you know he'd stick around, but he's made up his mind, and <laughs> he's got legitimate reasons. In, in addition to that, I just want to thank him for his most recent letter to a student from uh, Liverville High School regarding our. Uh, our, our ability to transport pedestrians throughout our town. And, and the uh, student at uh, Libertyville uh, needed some guidance and direction in the regard. So thanks, Dave, for thanks a lot for the 30 years. You've done a great job. Appreciate that, uh, Mayor Byrne. Um, specifically, I'm not leaving till March 3rd. I have two more board meetings. Uh, look forward to spending that time uh, with you. Uh, great village. Uh, I think Tom uh, will find that out shortly. I know Andrew has recently, as has Kevin. So we're all proud just to be part of the village of Vernon Hills family. So appreciate it. Well, congratulations. It's a, an award well deserved, Dave. Yeah. <clears throat> One last question to Dave. 
Is the uh, will, will the V plow be used this year? No. We really like the way the winter is going so far, so we're hoping <laughs> the answer is no. That's great. Okay, any other new business or communication? Okay, then hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn the board meeting and go into committee of the whole? So made. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, the ayes have it. So we go back to Mayor, you have to call the Committee of the Hold order. Say it again. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't hear Mayor, did you hear me? You you have to be the one to call the Committee of the Hold order. Oh, okay. I'd like to call the uh, committee the whole meeting to order. Okay. First item is approval of the committee the whole meeting minutes from January 3rd. Or do we? 2022. Do, do we want to, uh, Mayor, this is uh, Jim Ferolo, do we want to use the same process, uh, appoint um, Tom Cook as the chairman pro tem? Yes. Okay, so, so we could... <laughs> I'd like to nominate uh, Trustee Cook to be the uh, chairman pro tem for the duration of the meeting. Second it. All in favor is fine. Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, now, what the mayor suggested, the approval Still of the roll call? Uh, committee of the whole meeting minutes. Do you need a roll call for that or we, not? We, we didn't do a roll call at the beginning of the okay. oh, yeah, committee. Right. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Roll call, please. Trustee Marquardt? Here. Trustee Oppenheim? Here. Trustee Forster? Here. President Byrne? Here. Trustee Cook? Here. Trustees okay. Schenck and Takaoka gave prior notice that they would not be in attendance. Okay, so now we've got a motion a second, and do we do a roll call on it, or is it an I vote okay? Take it, an I vote's fine. Okay, yeah. okay, so now an, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, aye. Aye. Um, all right, then approval of the Committee of the Whole meeting minutes of January 3rd, 2023. Three. Three. Yeah. <laughs> January 3rd, yeah. Motion to approve. Second. Any comments or questions? Uh, hearing none, roll call, please. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Oppenheim? Aye. Trustee Forster? Aye. President Byrne? Aye. Chairman Pro Tem Cook? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, only item on the agenda tonight is Urban Air, 413 Milwaukee Avenue, Unit 200, special use for a children's recreation facility, amusement recreation, or training facility for adults. Uh, <clears throat> Chairman Pro Tem Cook, uh, yes. at this time you might consider giving members of any members of the public interested an opportunity to speak on the item on the agenda um, for three minutes per the village code. I, I think you should take those comments now and then get into the before topic. we get um yeah yeah before we get andrew's presentation on it uh, I, yeah i, I think okay. we want to get the comments right. and then move forward with the presentation right. so is there anyone that would like to use their three minutes to comment on this item i do okay please come forward if you could state your name for the sure for the record please uh, for the record, my name is Lenny Asaro. Uh, I am a, a partner at the law firm of Fagery, Drinker, Biddle, and Reith, um, LLP. Uh, office address is at 320 South Canal, Suite 3300, um, Chicago, Illinois, 60606. Uh, I know that I have three minutes um, for my comments. Um, I want to start by saying, number one, I represent SkyZone. SkyZone is a, um, um, a business that is um, highly similar, if not identical, to Urban Air. They are located um, less than, not even a uh, 16th of a mile, just north of where the proposed use is going to be located. Um, we oppose this, uh, the approval of this particular application. Uh, number one, um, there was absolutely no evidence pr presented at all 
um, at the plan at Planning and Zoning Commission hearing with respect to the standard number two that's listed there. I'm not going to go into the citations because I have a limited amount of time, but it has to do with presenting evidence that demonstrates that the proposed use will not have a, a, a deleterious impact on adjacent property values. There was zero evidence presented on that particular point. The applicant bears the burden of presenting evidence to the Planning and Zoning Commission and therefore by extension to you for you to make a decision as to whether or not they've met that standard. They have the burden. They have to present evidence on that point. They haven't. And to the extent that they haven't, and if this application is approved, it will be contested um, subsequently um, in the appropriate venue in the appropriate forum. Number two, um, the uh, application uh, th they're proposing to have as part of their use um, alcohol, um, a, a restaurant that serves alcohol and food. The zoning ordinance specifically regarding this property in this zoning district requires that that be a special, or requires a special use approval. With, uh, the, uh, apparently staff has interpreted um, a, a section within the zoning ordinance 13.3.0 um, to actually conclude that alcohol may be provided subject to receipt of the necessary permits and licenses. That is staff's opinions. That's not a legal interpretation of the zoning ordinance. It's not an insignificant point. They're proposing a special use, which is restaurant with alcohol service that they've never applied for. So it does not conform, which is one of the standards, to the zoning ordinance um, or the standards that they have to prove up. Um, the, There's absolutely um, no mention in any of the materials that you received um, based on my review of the um, uh, reports of the lack of evidence with respect to the proposed development or the, this proposed use uh, not having a deleterious or negative impact at all. So it's not even, you haven't even been presented with anything. So not only was there an absence of that evidence at the hearing, but in the materials that was provided to you, it doesn't exist. The last point that also does not exist in here is the point, the very important point that we made on behalf of SkyZone. And that has to do with basically your municipality and how municipalities apply their special use standards. Special use standards, we heard over and over again, well, if there's a McDonald's, there's a Burger King, what's the big deal? Well, McDonald's yeah, and Burger Sir King's John, are, in, uh, are in, One second, that, that's three minutes, uh, okay. Chairman Pro Tem. Okay. Uh, up to you if you wanted to let him finish his thought. You, you want to finish that thought. 45 yeah. seconds, sure. Yeah. That was the last point. Um, the, the zoning ordinance specifically states what the objectives are for special use. And one of the major objectives in a speci for special uses is to control the types of uses that are implemented within certain zoning districts. So th this is not a situation of a McDonald's being located next to a Burger King because those are typically permitted uses located within zoning districts. The use by SkyZone is a special use. We had to get a special use approval. Urban Air is proposing the identical use. They've got to get a special use. The amount of money that has been invested in SkyZone to locate where it locates, it locates there for a reason, because you want to limit where you are located in terms of competition. So you may, in, you may get an Urban Air if you approve it, but you also may lose a SkyZone if you do. Um, based on the, the, the very similar uses and the amount of money and investment that is outlaid for these kinds of uses, which is starkly different than a McDonald's and a Burger King. So with that, I would respectfully ask um, uh, that the committee uh, not recommend or not vote to approve this particular application for a special use permit for all those reasons and the other reasons that I've actually shared at the prior hearings. Thank you very much for indulging me for an extra 45 minutes. And thank, thank you to Mr. Farola. I appreciate you. that. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, then procedure should be your presentation followed by the petitioner, correct? Correct. Okay. So thank you. The uh, petitioner has proposed a uh, special use for a children's recreation facility uh, along with amusement recreation or training facility for adults. They're two separate category, uh, use categories in the zoning code. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, heard the petition beginning on November 30th uh, and continued to uh, December 14th uh, regarding the proposed use, which would be located in the former Ashley Furniture Store, which has been vacant for some time um, within uh, Marketplace at uh, 413 Milwaukee Avenue. 
uh, specifically Unit 200. It's a uh, 61,000 square foot unit. Uh, the petitioner has proposed a indoor amusement park uh, featuring a variety of attractions. <coughs> I'll leave it to them to explain uh, the nature of the business. The, uh, as we just heard, there was objection to the petition at the original hearing. Uh, the uh, commissioners, in response to the objection, uh, and in addition to those items uh, that were brought up by the objecting party, did request additional information and materials from uh, the petitioner. Uh, to be provided prior to the uh, continuation of the hearing. Uh, those materials are included in your packet for the committee of the whole discussion. Uh, they include clarification of zoning requirements related to alcohol service, which was really a question uh, for staff review in the zoning code. Uh, a more accurate site plan, analysis of parking demand, additional detail on the tenant approval process for prohibited uses uh, within the reciprocal easement agreement, uh, and a conceptual sign package, along with a uh, more detail on the inspection protocol for this uh, type of business. Uh, the commission did deliberate on the, uh, on the standards of the special use and ultimately did find uh, that, uh, made findings of fact in favor of the petition. Um, one thing to note before I hand it over to the petitioner is that there is a certificate of building use conversion request associated with this. Uh, the total square footage of this, uh, this particular unit would uh, exceed the threshold of 20% uh, non-retail use uh, for this particular shopping center. They have applied for it. It is not within the purview of the plan commission to make that determination. That does fall on the board. Uh, so that application uh, is referenced here in the staff memo. And with that, I would uh, ask uh, Mr. Hoffner and Mr. Stein to come present the business, uh, business plan. Yeah, come on up and just state your name for the record. Uh, Neil Hoffner. Okay. And I had slides. Okay. Yep, so I'm uh, presenting Urban Air um, in regards to the special use permit consideration. Um, just quick background. Um, Michael Browning started the first Urban Air as a single trampoline park. And since then, it's grown into a multi-attraction adventure park, which supports go-karts, wind tunnels um, since 2011. Currently, there are 230 adventure parks with 153 in operation and 80 in development. <coughs> and we offer membership programs, casual cafe, walk-in guests, birthday parties, corporate and field trip events. Um, in the Chicago land area, these are kind of the locations. Um, the number 2.0 and 2.5, those uh, 2.0s would be considered your, your basic urban air package uh, for attractions. 2.5 would include something like go-karts. So that's where if you look at some of the neighbors like Crystal Lake, um, Bloomingdale, which are about 40 minutes away, those don't have go-karts. So we kind of different ourselves from, from those other parks. And uh, our proposed location, as mentioned before, is 413 North Milwaukee Avenue, Suite 200, which was formerly occupied by Ashley Furniture. Um, and this is kind of an assessment of the parking as well, which shows that we exceed the sum of the required parking with 806 required stalls um, out of the 840 to 862 that are provided. Um, this is kind of a table of, um, with the requirement of 20% allowable for could you, go, could you go back one oh, second yep. i just this is a question for staff are the are the outlots on milwaukee just for my information outlots on milwaukee avenue are part of the rpud as well correct so they're, they're sorry they are part of the rpud the uh parking calculations specific to the area for no no but I, this was for reference to another another point later oh, but right, right. but the outlaws outlots along milwaukee avenue are part of the Marketplace RPUD, correct? That's correct. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you. Going back. Okay, uh, so to calculate the 20% of the square footage that was allowable, um, Home Depot was not included as that was a separate building. So within the, the buildings that we shown before, which are WAN, DSW, Bed Bath and & Beyond, and the other two available units, um, the 20% non-retail ended up being 38,000 square feet. Um, 
for the special use conversion. And the building certificate, as um, Andrew indicated, that um, that would bring us to the 61,612 square footage that we're requesting. And this is um, a basic plan of the attraction. Without the, um, with just a special use, we would only be able to occupy probably about 62% of the square footage. That's why we're, we've applied for that other certificate. And these are some of the, the attractions that different, differentiate us from um, the competition and other offerings in the area. Um, some of those would be go-karts, laser, laser tag, the climbing walls, bumper cars, spin flip cars, and Skyrider. Those are the main ones that um, the competition does not provide. And a lot of them are very exclusive for urban air. Uh, there was a question before about uh, some of the urban air in, in park inspections. So in-house, we, um, we do have a daily inspection that we do um, that's provided through a program called Action Cards. So those are required um, before we open to the guests. So those have to be completed and um, submitted before, otherwise we're in violation of not having that, that done. And some parks also, um, you, you have the partial days, which would be the weekdays where we're open three to eight, but then on the weekends, um, it's, it's best practices to have another inspection kind of th midday, just to make sure that, um, nothing is falling apart or things are being addressed. So these are digitally logged. Um, basically each manufacturer of the attraction will have these points that you need to check out and then you have a, a tablet where you take pictures and you follow the checkpoints. I don't have a copy of it because it's proprietary in nature, but that's um, kind of what Urban Air requires us to do. And each lead will, will run through this inspection that takes probably 30 minutes uh, for each attraction and you have multiple leads so you can get it done simultaneously. The monthly inspection, that's a little bit more um, demanding and uh, that sometimes takes two or three days to complete. Um, and that would be your park manager that does that. Um, not all at once, but kind of within those, those um, two or three days. And it's due, it uh, has a certain submittal time frame, just like the daily inspections that it has to be completed by to get credit. And third party inspections, um, these are kind of tied to the state regulations, as well as our franchise agreement for Illinois, LJM would be our inspector that we would coordinate with. And um, the captive program is also another one that our insurance requires us to, to have. And this is just kind of a, a sample menu of our fast cafe. Um, these are familiar items and it shows that um, this isn't as much of a sit down uh, restaurant. This is something that kids want to re-energize and get back out there and um, get back to jumping on trampolines and enjoying themselves. So these are kind of familiar foods that um, they could kind of grab and go. These are samples of the ticket prices. Um, so there's multiple tiers depending on what experience the user wants and um, just kind of what they're willing to uh, venture into. Um, sometimes with, with height requirements, of someone who's younger can experience things like the premium attractions like go-karts. So they would kind of fall into a different tier of pricing. So um, we offer multiple levels just for each user experience. And these are the uh, minimum hours of operations which complement the, the school day. So during school days, we'll be open Monday through Thursday, 3 to 8 p.m. And then Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays, we kind of open that time frame up and uh, during summer, we'll, we'll kind of uh, be open more, we'll be more available, um, kind of like how we are on Saturday and Sunday, as well as um, having special events. Um, those, those time frames could change. Employments, uh, this is kind of a tough one. For a 2.5 park, they estimate between uh, 110 to 130 employees. And this is kind of driven by how many part-time employees you have. So in some areas where you have more high school students, there's certain labor laws where they can't employ for more than 15 hours 
Um, so then you'd have to hire more underage to, to complement those goals. So that's why there's so much fluctuation between the numbers, depending on how much full-time staff you have versus the part-time. But this is kind of talking to other parks. This is um, something that they, they kind of recommended. Um, but this is just what will be on your, um, your, your staff. Uh, but uh, for your scheduled employees at a given time, it could be 30 to 50 employees. And of course, that will change between peak and uh, non-peak seasonality and high and tr low traffic days, you know, weekdays versus weekends. And the max oct occupancy per our code is set at 779 people. <laughs> but um, there's ways to reduce that. <clears throat> if, if it feels a little bit crowded, then you could delay the walk-in availability or enforce the time limits on the bands a little bit more um, rigidly. And that's all I got. Um, questions, comments from the board? Trustee Havenheim? You have a few. Uh, can I ask Mr. Ferrolo regarding uh, section 18.3.2 of the zoning code, uh, the special use section of the zoning code? So. Um, the the attorney for Sky Zone suggested that uh, that it is the petitioner's obligation to present evidence that something will not be injurious. Is that your understanding as well? A couple of things on that. Uh, the the comment you heard suggested that the zoning administrator doesn't have the ability to interpret the zoning code, which I completely disagree with. Uh, that's part of the zoning administrator's job. Relative to whether or not there's a deleterious effect uh, of this use um, in, in accordance with 18.3.2, that standard states that the special use will not be injurious to the use and enjoyment of other property in the immediate vicinity uh, for the purposes permitted, nor substantially diminish or, and impair property values within the adjacent neighborhood. Mm -hmm. The P&Z Planning and Zoning Commission heard evidence uh, and determined that all six of these standards have been met. We're met. Okay, and uh, th they heard that, at, and this particular standard at issue really goes to whether or not a use and its um, factors, um, its, its characteristics such as hours of operation, traffic, noise, odors, garbage, any kind of nuisance aspects of a use would really negatively impact the area uh, surrounding this particular use. It, it doesn't go to um, protecting competition mm -hmm. within the village. Um, and we got into this in the hearing a bit. Um, the, the, the purpose of the zoning code is not to, well, we certainly want all of our uses and businesses in town to succeed. The purpose of the zoning code isn't to limit competition. And the, and the powers of, these, of the bodies, such as the Committee of the Whole, uh, the Village Board, Planning and Zoning, don't include protecting uh, current uses from competition. So in terms of the, the question you asked, it, it's the obligation of the petitioner to present evidence. I, I would agree with that. But, but what I think you have here is the evidence that was presented was sufficient in the mind of the Planning and Zoning Commission such that it found that it could recommend affirmatively on this and find that all of these standards have been met. So the notion that this, petit this petitioner has to go out and get an appraiser to make a finding, it's almost like proving a negative. Right. That this use is not going to cause a loss of property value. Yeah. It, 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 it's, that's not my opinion as to what this standard calls for. Well, would so not, I do disagree. Would not some of the things like <clears throat> adequate parking, hours of operation, all of that stuff, being compliance with what's normally there, that would all be stuff that would be proving that it's not harming any other? That goes toward a positive recommendation. Yeah, okay. Because that, that was how I used to look at it back on. When you were I, on the plant? When, when I was on ZBA, yeah. yeah. Farm system, farm system for the, for the village board, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then may I ask you about uh, the alcohol issue? Um, yeah, I, I think your... that's a better, um, answer coming from Andrew because that is a highly technical review of the of the code. It's my understanding that alcohol uses are permitted according to the, the underlying zoning entitlements per, based on the fact that a license is granted. 
but there's no further special use that has to be granted other beyond what was granted when this was originally entitled. Well, that's we have had, we so have had uh, liquor licenses in that RPUD. That's why I was, right. yeah. yeah. But Andrew, I know you've looked at this underlying RPUD. So in this particular case, the, uh, the use itself um, in, in the zoning code as well as the RPUD, but the use itself in the zoning code of the, uh, the, the second half of the special use, the adult, uh, amusement, recreation, uh, training facility um, has a uh, most of the uses in in the uh, in the B1 district are just listed out. This particular use has uh, some additional uh, bullet points directly under it, and it notes that alcohol service uh, is assumed to be uh, associated with an adult recreation facility. So. Uh, based on that, uh, and in my read of the RPUD as well, um, I had determined that no specific special use was required uh, because this, uh, this particular special use does imply um, that uh, alcohol service would be associated with it, subject to a liquor license. But the special use aspect, the reason that they need a special use was because it's a children's facility and an adult facility so both of those use categories are, uh, are distinct uses within the zoning code. Mm -hmm. um, their age range uh, kind of uh, spans both. Uh, their, their target age range uh, spans both the adult side and the, and the youth side. I think they tend more toward uh, teenagers, <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but uh, the, the special use, that's why it's, it was published with both. But I, I guess I, I missed the, the part, and, and I watched all three hours of the original meeting. I missed the part as to what exactly made it so that they needed a special use. Um, so the, well, uh, the, the two uses that I just referred to, the mm. uh, children's, uh, children's recreation facility yeah. and the recreation training facility and amusement for adults, uh, those are, those are those, both. Those are both special yeah. use. Yes within that zoning district. Within what okay. was basically a retail RPD. A retail yeah. district, okay. Other questions from the board? Any other comments from staff? Uh, just one, one quick note. Um, I was, when I was reading the memo, um, I would typically copy and paste the uh, conditions recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission at the end uh, under the action requested. So the conditions, they're in the minutes, but I didn't specifically put them into the memo. Uh, so uh, I would, you know, prior to any sort of consideration, I just want to point out um, the conditions of approval that were recommended by the, the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, the first one was that the tenant build-out plan shall be reviewed by the fire department for egress requirements prior to occupancy. Uh, second one, the permit plans for the proposed tenant build-out shall be reviewed by Lake County for requirements including, but not limited to, required size of water service to the unit, grease basin, location and sizing, and food service establishment requirements. Uh, number three, petitioner and property manager shall provide documentation to demonstrate that the existing tenants have waived the prohibited use provision of the reciprocal easement agreement. Uh, and the fourth uh, is a re just a reference to the uh, use conversion certificate. Okay. I had a couple quick questions yeah. for you. Um, one, these indoor go-karts are what type of an engine? Uh, they're all electric. All electric? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, and the, the Sky Rider is that sort of zip line ride, correct? Yeah, so you, you're secured in a harness. Yep, sorry. Yep, you're the Skyrider, you're secured in a harness. And before you launch off, off the rail, there's kind of a, you're checked first by the employee. And then after there's like a, a small place where the, the platform, you kind of raise your feet up to, to check before you go, um, before you go out on the track. So that's, that's basically the, the Skyrider. It's, and, like okay, and because is that the one that you had a problem with at least on one other occasion, or there was one that that's been discussed, and um, the Urban Air requires a lot of training and certification on that, and the one that was in the news um, that's kind of more local, um, it was they have video footage, but what wasn't mentioned was that um, the user modified 
the the harness and that kind of um, had her drop so basically you're going to be inspecting that stuff on a more regular on a regular right so it's inspected um well you, you inspect the equipment to make sure everything's sealed there's no broken bu buckles and then once the person uses on there's there's a procedure to check when it's on the, the user okay and then there's a, a temporary little um mini jump where you lift your feet and you make sure that everything's uh, secure okay. and before you use it so yes right, thank you how about the one in lakeland florida um that one i'm that one? not familiar with what happened there so okay. anyone i guess you're the only one from <laughs> from yeah. the company so they wouldn't they wouldn't know okay yeah because that's that's the one where they're where a young 10 year old dropped from from the middle of the ride or towards the end of the ride, yeah. 20 feet or I, so. Yeah, that one I don't know. I just know there's different size harnesses and you're required to take the training. And there's also height requirements too. Mm. So th those are kind of the main points that we're required to follow. Can I ask about the uh, uh, conversion use process? Have we done that before? Um, for adjusting the, the percentage 20%. from 20. This would be 32%, I understand, instead of 20. So I, I did review records from past uh, petitions. I, I did find some examples of it. Um, the way I had seen it covered uh, in, an, in an ordinance is if the, if the item uh, requires the uh, special use, there would either be a recital or a specific section within uh, the ordinance itself that does acknowledge uh, the granting of the use and conversion certificate. Um, there's an application, a separate application for that, uh, which we have received, and the attachments from that application are um, included with the, the memo. Uh, but yes, I, I, I have not done one myself, but I did uh, take a look and I did find examples of it. And this would mean that, um, unfortunately, if Bed Bath & Beyond goes out, then anything that goes in there couldn't have any non-retail, I would imagine. So the way the code handles a vacant unit is it counts it as retail. If something non-retail were to go in there, uh, a new conversion certificate would have to be issued for that increase. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this has been converted a few times. Originally, it was one giant Kmart. The whole thing? Yeah. It was about a 250,000 square foot Kmart originally. Yeah. Um, any other comments or questions from the board? You're looking for? Uh, direction to prepare a special use ordinance. Uh, with the conditions of approval as recommended uh, by the Planning and Zoning Commission and uh, with the inclusion of a reference to the granting of a, a use and conversion certificate uh, for the, the unit that we've described. Is there a motion to that effect? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to second. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, roll call, please. Trustee Oppenheim? Aye. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Forster? Aye. President Byrne? President Byrne? Chairman Pro Tem Cook? Aye. You can just let the record reflect, let the minutes reflect that President Byrne was uh, absent for that vote. Okay, motion carries. Okay, all right. Um, anything else? Uh, no, that's all for this evening. There, uh, there is no closed session scheduled for this evening. Okay, in that case, is there a motion to adjourn the Committee of the Whole? So made. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we are adjourned.